What happens when you get a cut? Your blood clots and the wound eventually heals. Magic, right? But the answer is actually much more complex. When you get a small cut, cells around the cut release signaling molecules that activate the platelet-derived growth factor signaling pathway, also known as PDGF. PDGF stimulates cell division, causing cells in the blood vessel to, to divide and clot, stopping you from bleeding out. In PDGF signaling, five different hydrophilic signaling molecules, PDGF-A, PDGF-B, PDGF-C, PDGF-D, and PDGF-AB, bind to two different tyrosine kinase receptor molecules, PDGF-R-alpha and PDGF-R-beta. Tyrosine kinase receptors are typically used for cell-to-cell -cell communication and play an important role in regulating cell growth, differentia differentiation, and survival. Tyrosine kinase receptors are located outside of the cell membrane. There are several advantages of using tyrosine kinase receptors. Not only is the cell response rapid, but tyrosine kinase receptors have a dual function, an external receptor and an internal protein kinase. However, the response to these receptors are short-lived and they can easily be overactivated, often by mutation. In tyrosine kinase signaling, a signaling molecule, in our case, this is one of the PDGF lig ligands, approaches the inactive receptor. The molecule binds to the receptor, activating it and causing the receptor to undergo phosphorylation. In this process, ATP is converted to ADP and the remaining phosphate groups bind to the receptor. The highly electronegative charge on the phosphate groups attracts cytoplasmic signaling proteins, which bind to the receptor protein and start the signaling cascade. PDGFs are made of disulfide linked polypeptide chains. The synthesis of PDGFs is increased in response to thrombin, which is an enzyme in blood plasma that causes the clotting of blood. It can be released by platelets, endothelial cells, which form the inner lining of a blood vessel, and activated macrophages, which are mo mobile white blood cells at sites of infection in other cells. As dimeric molecules, the signaling molecules bind two receptors simultaneously and thus induce receptor dimerization, which is the chemical union of two identical molecules when they bind to the receptor. The receptors are activated, leading to autophosphorylation on tyrosine residues in the intracellular parts of the receptors. Autophosphorylation serves two functions, one to activate the intracellular parts of the receptors and two to provide docking sites for downstream SH2 domain containing signal transduction molecules. The enzymatic activities of the SH2 signaling molecules are activated by binding to the receptors, phosphorylation of the receptors, or they are already active. The receptors have five domains in their extracellular part, a single transmembrane domain, the, and the intracellular part consists of a juxtamembrane domain, tyrosine kinase domain, and a carboxyl terminal tail. After binding, the ligand receptor complexes are stabilized by interactions between them. Removing part of the car carboxyl terminal tail of the beta receptor causes receptor activation. Folds over the kinase domain keeps the kinase inactive, and changing the shape relieves this inhibition. To initiate signaling, the tyrosine phosphates are inactivated, inactivated by oxidation of cysteine residue in the active site of the phosphates. The receptors bind around 10 different families of SH2 domain containing signaling molecules, which initiates the activation of several different signaling pathways. Receptor signaling is enhanced by the PDZ domain prote protein NHERF. The GRB2 slash SOS pathway initiates activation of the mitogen activated protein kinase cascade, which is a pathway implicated in cell growth. The PLC-Y pathway creates products, which include the inositol 145 triphosphate and disylglycerol, which mobilizes intracellular CA2 plus and activates members of the PKC family. PI3 kinase pathway has a number of downstream effector molecules and mediates actin reorganization, hemotaxis, cell growth, and antiapoptosis, which is something that prevents cell death. PDGF receptors are expressed by cell types involved in wound healing, such as fibroblasts, smooth muscle cells, neutrophils, and macrophages. The latter two are types of blood, white blood cells. Stimulation means that the cells that have these receptors are recruited to the wounded area. The specific cell response depends on which of the receptor types the cell expresses, type alpha or beta. Fibroblasts and smooth muscle cells express more betas, while human platelets express only alpha receptors. PDGF signaling activity leads to cell growth, change in cell shape and mobility, and chemotaxis of fibroblasts, smooth muscle cells, neutrophils, and macrophages. Chemotaxis is a movement of cells in a direction corresponding to a gradient of increasing or decreasing concentration. The macrophages produce other growth factors that are important to the healing process. PDGF signaling also stimulates production of matrix molecules such as fibronectin, which promotes the spreading of platelets at the site of injury, and the migration of neutrophils, monocytes, 
fibroblasts, collagen, proteoglycans, hyalo hyaluronic acid, and endothelial cells into the wound region. Overall, it speeds up the rate of healing. Signaling continues into the pH decreases enough for endosomes to fuse with lysosomes, causing dissociation of PDGFs from the receptors. Besides ending the signaling pathway, the pathway can be controlled or modulated. Camp-dependent protein kinase inhibits several of the pathways through phosphorylation of some of the components. Stimulation of fibroblasts or mesothelial cells leads to a decrease in the expression of the alpha receptor, and the protein kinase C is involved in this negative regulation. When tyrosine kinase receptor proteins are created in the cell, a small mutation can occur. This could be as simple as a switched base in an amino acid sequence and causes the tyrosine kinase receptor protein to be permanently on. PDGF is responsible for cell pro proliferation, so when a mutation occurs, the overactive signaling leads to the continued creation of diseased cells. This can lead to the development of many diseases, the no most notable being cancer. In chronic monomolectic leukemia, the PDGFR beta receptor has a mutation that causes it to fuse with a TEL gene, leading to the overactivation of PDGFR beta. To treat this, several different types of antagonists can be used. One of these is imatinib, an extragenous antagonist that blocks the actions of abnormal kinase receptor proteins. When a patient with chronic monomolectic leukemia is treated with treated with imatinib, it enters the body and binds to any mutated tyrosine kinase receptor proteins. This prevents signaling molecules from binding to the receptor and stops the signaling pathway from occurring. Since PDGF is responsible for stimulating cell pro proliferation, the tumor cells are then unable to grow. To summarize, when a cut occurs, thrombin and PDGF signaling molecules are released. They bind to the PDGF alpha and PDGF beta receptors and the pathway activates. Autophosphorylation then occurs, where ATP is converted to ADP, and the phosphate groups bind to the receptors. Oxidation then occurs, where the receptors lose electrons, which initiate the signaling pathway. There are 10 different PDGF signaling pathways, which lead to cell growth and repair. When the cell's pH decreases to a certain level, the receptor releases the signaling molecule, terminating the pathway.